Katrina hooks north into the Gulf of Mexico and quickly picks up speed and size, becoming a Category 2 hurricane. Locals try to safeguard their property as the governors of Louisiana and Mississippi declare states of emergency. As its winds reach 115 miles an hour, Katrina turns into a Category 3 hurricane with New Orleans in its sights. Katrina grows into a Category 4 hurricane. A few hours later, it reaches Category 5, the highest possible rating. Winds exceed 175 miles an hour. All residents in New Orleans are ordered to evacuate. For those without the means to leave, the city sets up shelters. Many locals simply hunker down in their homes and prepare to weather the storm. As dawn breaks, Katrina's wind speeds slow back down to a Category 4 hurricane. It makes landfall at 6 a.m., 60 miles southeast of New Orleans. Its 140 mile an hour winds pummel the coasts of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. The eye of the storm moves just east of New Orleans, but the city is not spared. New Orleans sits below sea level, surrounded by Lake Pontchartrain and the Mississippi River. High flood walls called levees keep the water at bay. But by 8 a.m. there are reports that a levee has broken. The waters of Lake Pontchartrain rush in. Levees in three locations are breached. 80% of the city is flooded. Some neighborhoods are submerged under 20 feet of water. As night falls, Katrina slows to a tropical storm. It heads north through Tennessee and into Kentucky. New Orleans lies in shambles. It is left without power, without drinking water. Many residents are stranded on rooftops, desperate to be rescued. Bodies float in the streets. Looting breaks out. Thousands make their way to the Superdome and Convention Center in hopes of being evacuated. The waters stop rising, but the city is in chaos. Looting and violence are so widespread that police are forced to stop rescue operations to combat the problem. Conditions at the Superdome and Convention Center are increasingly unsafe. People lack food, water, and basic sanitation. There are reports of violent assaults. Altogether, over 50,000 people wait for the buses that will evacuate them. For most, the buses do not come. The National Guard arrives in force and restores order. They bring convoys of food and water. Evacuations begin in earnest.